So another early morning alarm call, so I'll be getting up well, in the middle of the night really and heading out in the dark and driving along dark windy roads to reach my destination which was a car park up in the west of Scotland where I set about getting ready for a rather grand adventure in some stunning conditions amongst some stunning mountain scenery. Getting away as the first signs of light started to appear in the sky certainly had its advantages and as the dawn broke the skies to the east lit up a lovely pink colour, just what I was expecting and I was striding on towards the mountain with a lovely sunrise happening. It was just absolutely fantastic. I was really, really looking forward to what lay ahead. Well, we look at this. Fantastic. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> and what time are we at? 5.55 in the morning and uh, yeah, I've been up for a while, I've been on the go now for about uh, four hours so I woke up, yeah, middle of the night, just about, just past 2am, quick shower, bowl of porridge and then I, I was on the road before three, I can't remember the exact time and then it took me a couple of hours to get up here and I was walking, oh god, I don't know, about five o'clock so I've been, I've been on the go for about an hour and I've taken a sneaky day off. The, the forecast has been really dry for the last week or two and the forecast for this weekend is looking fantastic but unfortunately I've got family commitments. Or fortunately because I'm looking forward to them. So um, yeah the boss allowed me a, a, wee, a wee cheeky day off today uh, at short notice and uh, yeah I'm heading up here behind me. I'll talk a bit, a bit, a bit more about it in a wee while but I've, I need to assess my options and on which uh, route I'm going to take. And I can't really do that until I see what the conditions are like in the ground a bit higher up. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> right, less talking, let's get walking. It's certainly been an alpine start to the day and Walking up past this sort of alpine like hut, probably the most alpine like hut in Scotland, it did actually feel like I could have been somewhere else in the continent in the high mountains. It was lovely. Anyway, I passed the hut and at this point the ascent started and I made my way further up the mountain with these towering rock cliffs starting to surround me and fill my field of view. It was rather grand. Wow, what a place. Look at this. Absolutely fabulous. If I told you I was in the, uh, the Swiss Alps or maybe the Italian Dolomites, you would believe me because this, especially on a day like today when the, when the spring snow is still sitting in the high gullies and the sun's out shining against these big granite cliffs, it's just what a, what a place, what an amphitheatre. Absolutely gorgeous. So, I don't know if you'll you'll know where I am, but uh, for those of you, you, you that don't know where I am, um, I'm on Ben Nevis, and a lot of you won't recognise this as Ben Nevis. A lot of I'd say ninety percent of people that come up the Ben come up on the other side, which is it's a bit like Mr Jekyll or Doctor Jekyll and Mr Hyde. You've got the, the the way up from Glen Nevis, a big whaleback ridge path going all the way up. And then you come over to this side, the north side of the bend, and it's just, just a different mountain. It's absolutely spectacular. So anyway, now that I'm up here, I've made my decision. I was going to be going up a gully, a snow gully, but you know what? The snow here is pretty firm, but the sun's been up and on the, the top of the, the gully is round about the cornices for quite some time, and the temperature didn't drop below zero last night, according to the forecast. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go and try and get onto one of these ridges and get on some rock. I'm going to make my way up to the, the highest point in Britain, but for the time being, I'm actually going to have a second breakfast here and just take take this in at the moment because it's just, it doesn't get much better than this. Ha! 
Right, let's get some brekkie. So I stopped here to have some breakfast, just just to take it all in. And Ben Nevis translates. There's a few different translations depending on what source you look at, and and some call it the mountain with the, with its head in the clouds, which is quite apt because it's so high. It, it is quite often covered in cloud, but other meanings suggest maybe the venomous mountain, and, and certainly this side is a lot more venomous looking. Not in a daylight like today, right enough, but more venomous looking than the other side. And, a final translation is Mountain of, of Heaven and uh, yeah, that's probably more apt for my trip today because that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like I was in heaven. Absolutely beautiful. Up I went and I was glad I had my crampons and ice axe because even even late into the spring and early summer the snows can linger in Scotland at the site and for me to access the ridge I was heading to which is on the skyline here I did have to cross quite a bit of snow and right here I'm going across a gully which is called number five gully and just a, a word of warning in the less good conditions this can be an avalanche spot so just be wary if you're trying to access this route uh, you just have to be careful going across here and i was certainly still having to be careful today because the sun was starting to get at that snow and i could have done with it being a little bit firmer anyway i soon crossed the snow and reached the ridge line oh Whew, well i'm warm <laughs> believe it or not I've just uh, just crossed the uh, the gully with the snow in it, and now that I'm up on the ridge, the sun's coming up. I'm going to have to take this uh, jack off. I think <laughs> I'm absolutely toasty. It really is like an alpine day, and you know what? It's only it's only twenty past eight in the morning. So um, yeah, now that I'm on the ridge, there's a bit of scrambling. So I'm going to put the uh, the axe away. Part of it. Take the crampons off. I might have to put them back on at the top, or maybe when I'm descending on my way down. But yeah, I'm glad that I had them for. Um, from the uh, the quarry floor across the gullies to get to this point it would have been a bit dicey without them but I'm in a magnificent position right now behind me I can see down I think it's Glen Speen and over to Carmore Gerard I can see right down to the CIC hut that I passed earlier on on the way up and it just looks like it's right at my feet but just about a thousand feet away <laughs> what a day it's absolutely spectacular so yeah I'm gonna get my crampons off D layer and we'll start the scrambling. Woo. Right, let's do it. So high up on the ridge, the sun had done its job over the last few days and most of the snow on the ridge line was gone and it was in summer condition. It was just perfect. And I was soon reaching, I suppose, what is the crux of this this move, the gangway, which is a wall. Now, on this side, you don't, you don't get a sense of the exposure, but on the other side, there's a massive big drop down into the depths of the quarry. So you do need to uh, be, be sure-footed going across this part. And it's just lovely, a lovely exposed scramble across the top. After a shortish part of the, the ridge, which, which was a bit more difficult scrambling wise, but nothing, nothing, nothing too technical. The, the the ridge eases up, and there was a few patches of snow here, but not not too many. I didn't have to get the crampons on just yet, and up I went doing some easy scrambling with the sun basking down on my back and the views across the bend and to Carmore Jera just absolutely stunning. It was fantastic fun going up this ridge. Can highly recommend it. And as I went up, the uh, I had the 
I had the 360 camera on, so the, I do apologise about the views here. The wide-angled lens does, does sometimes tend to give a bit more feeling of exposure than what it actually is, so don't be put off by this, but um, it just it, having the 360 camera makes the filming a bit easier. I, need, I needed both my hands for scrambling up the rocks here. After some sustained grade 1 scrambling, there's a short section on the ridge which levels out slightly and I got a good view of what lay ahead. And as I was higher up there was more snow on the ground here and I was I was definitely needing those crampons back on and the ice axe out just to just to help me. So from summer conditions back into winter conditions and heading along a lovely, lovely snowy arete with drops that dropped on either side. It just was fantastic. Once again, the 360 camera skews the angle here, so it's not, not nowhere near as steep as it looks here. You'll, you'll get a better perspective of it in a wee while when you'll see me climbing up the ridge. Certainly felt alpine, and from the crunch of the snow to the scrattle of the crampons on the rocks certainly reminded me that of that as I headed up. As I headed up the uh, the mountain, I was glad that I delayed because there was very little wind, if any at all, and the sun was just yeah, it was it was heating me up and having using my muscles to get up to the top of the hill, I was certainly feeling the heat. Certainly unusual for springtime this high in a mountain with lots of snow on the ground, but you know what? I wasn't complaining. Oh right, just a quick piece of camera. That's me getting near the top. You see down behind me, I don't know if the GoPro picked that up, but that's the route. Nice snowy arete today, which was just, just added to it. Snow wasn't great, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> but, you know, as I said, the sun's been up since um, half past five, and it's now half past nine, so it's, it's kind of got to it. And um, I'm kind of glad I went in the way I did, and I'll explain later on, but you maybe see behind me all these cornices here, and it's the same over round about the top of the gully that I came across. Um, anyway, I'll explain about that a bit more, but look at this, what a place to be, eh? woohoo, absolutely glorious, and that's me, just about at the top of the, the route that I'm up the ridge, and up there is the plateau, and then I'm going to be going up here, up to the summit, which is over there, <laughs> but yeah, what a place, fantastic, and it's really quiet, I think because I started so early, there's, I've met one party who are going up Combe Gully, and that's it, so, I expect to see people up the tourist path, though. Right, let's go. Oh. So I was soon on the, the end of the ridge and onto the plateau and, and skirting round the top of the north face of Ben Nevis with all those cornices still hanging there and what I was mentioning in the last piece of camera is what I touched on earlier on. You have to be careful going on to this route which is called which was called Ledge Route because you have to cross number five gully and those cornices can be a little bit unstable late in the season. And the route I took in minimised my time on the gully, tra traversing it higher up. Woo. <laughs> well, that's me on the summit of Ben Nevis. I think the last time I was here, I had to climb up the steps down there. <laughs> just shows you how much snow still left, and we're not. We're not actually far from uh, May. We're just a day away, a few days away from the start of May, and there's still uh, a fair bit of snow, and there's lots of cornicing ready to f fall down those gullies. Anyway, I've got the place to myself. Not often you can see that on the Britain's highest peak. And I think that was just the early start. It's now 10 o'clock, so it's taken me about five hours to come up the, the route I did. Ledge route is what it's called. So, yeah, I'm almost uh, tempted to stop here and have something to eat, but I think I might drop down. This is just a halfway point. <laughs> I've actually got another route to do now, another adventure. The uh, You might recognise it as my descent, because there might have been a few videos done on on, on this route uh, where I'm going to go down before, and it's one of my favourites in, uh, in Scotland. So, yeah, I'm going to keep on going, drop down um, to the start of this route, and get these crampons off. I don't even need to have my helmet on, you know what, I'm just being lazy. <laughs> <laughs> lazy. I look silly, but there's nobody here to, uh, to see me, it's just all you guys. 
Right, I'm going to crack on and get down to the uh, the bottom of the hill. Right, let's go. Ooh. So I headed down off the summit of Ben Nevis and I was headed towards the start of the Carmor Jerogorette and I'm glad that I'd kept my ice axe out and my crampons on because the snow was still fairly uh, fairly deep on the descent but I soon made it down onto some nice dry rocks just before the start of the CMD arete. Oh well, it's uh, what time are we at now? 10 to 11. And I've been sat here for, I don't know, 20 minutes now. And I don't know if you make it out actually, oh, over my shoulder, that's where I'm going over there, that's Carmore Gerard and the Arete is uh, just ahead of me. That's what's up next is the CMD Arete, which I'm really looking forward to. But you know, it's quite pleasant. Um, I've, I've got the uh, the helmet off now and the, the crampons off, but I'm glad I kept them on because coming down the, uh, down the slopes to the start of the CMD Arete, it was still very snowy. I wouldn't have fancied uh, coming down that way without the uh, ice axe and, and possibly could have got away with the crampons, but I kept them on anyway. Anyway, I'm going to sit here for a bit longer. <laughs> Top up my suntan. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get cracked on along the ridge. But uh, yeah, just doing a bit of sunbathing. Not bad. <laughs> Lovely. After soaking up the sun for a bit longer, it was soon time to get that backpack on and start the easy scramble along the Carmore Gerigarette. And if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you'll have seen me do this, this route quite a few times and it's just fantastic. It's a really, really easy scramble and uh, I highly recommend it if you're uh, okay with some heights. This is certainly the best way to get to the summit of the UK's highest mountain just gives fantastic views and yeah for sure is the way up that I would recommend. Oh right that's me on the red. just have to watch my feet <laughs> and it's as wonderful as it always is, it's fantastic. There's a wee breeze here, I've put my jacket back on because of that but um, I think once I start dropping dropping down and losing altitude, it's going to be a toasty day down in the Glen. But look at that view behind me. Look at that. Like the, the little Bren of a face they call that on Ben Nevis over there. And it's just a fantastic wall. And every now and again I can hear a rock fall coming down as the sun's heating up the, the rock. So it's not a place to be underneath it, that's for sure. But yeah, so this is, this is lovely. Um, I didn't need my crampons or my helmet on coming along here. This this part here is in summer condition. Um, I did need them for coming off the bend, though. It was, uh, it was certainly, yeah, certainly required for coming down that snow slope. I'd have been struggling without them. So just once again, always remember to pack your ice axe and crampons even well into spring, early summer, because the snow can linger, and all it takes is one wrong foot placement or slip, and uh, yeah, you do need to be careful. Talking of which, I am getting a wee bit tired, so I've slowed right down just to make sure I'm, uh, I'm not uh, slipping or putting my feet in places they shouldn't be. It's a flat bit at the moment, hence why I've got the camera out, but I'll need to put it away again because there's a wee bit more scrambling coming up ahead of me. But yeah, fantastic! Let's go up to Monroe number two, Carmore Gerag. Let's go. Let me take the glasses off. This is the summit. Well, the camera is actually on the wee cairn, 
on the summit of Carr and Moor Gerard, which is a Monroe as well. And the real beauty about, about this hill is actually that hill <laughs> is the views you get to the north face. It's definitely the best way around the uh, Round the, or up the, the walkers route up the bend, I'd always suggest coming up via the CMD array. As long as you don't mind a wee bit of bouldery ground and a simple scrambling and some exposure, it's fantastic as you can see behind me. So I've kept my wee buff on. The reason I've got this on, it's not for the cold, but it's actually to save my my napper getting burnt <laughs> in the sun. So um, it's uh, it's just been lovely. There's a wee breeze as you can probably hear, and the views are fantastic. It's a wee bit hazy. It's not crystal clear that you can get it, but I'm not going to complain. I can see right over past Glencoe towards Crook and in these places to the south and away to the north as well. But uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit tired now, I'm just glad that it's all downhill from here. So I was thinking of actually dropping into the Glen to the east of here and heading back that way, but um, I'm just going to head back the usual path and drop back onto the north face uh, path and back to the car. So I'm going to sit here, have a bite to eat and then get cracked on again. After having another bite to eat on the second summit, it was now time for that walk back down into the glen and back to the car and I can admit to you, I was feeling knackered. It had been a fantastic but long day and it, it wasn't, it taken me probably, the, the whole route probably took me about nine, nine and a half hours. But I was taking my time uh, but my legs were still feeling it and this, this walk back seemed to go on forever and ever. However, it was just one of those days that I'll live long in the memory. Stay safe out there guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next adventure.